see them talk say Make me off my But then go say My ego don't come So my people make you lie down Yo 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 My ego don't come Oh yo yo My people make me shut down Yo yo yeah, there is this uh, story shared by this wonderful pastor, and I want to share that with you uh, today. So watch this for the next six minutes or seven. I'll be back. The driver felt the wagon tires rupture and decided to park the car with the hope of changing the tires. It was like a film in a GC motley crowd of armed men in military uniform came out of the bush. They fired at the boot of the car. Ahead of us, five of them came out of the bush. Another two came from the rear. My daughter screamed, Mommy, Daddy, what's going on? There was no time to say a word. They marched us through into the bush, firing into the sky. They hit me on my chest, hit my daughter on her head. Blood oozed. At this time, it was better to kill me. I shouted at one of the armed men. His response was hell. He went straight for my private part. Tore my dress with his gun. The others ripped my dresses. I was left with my undies. My husband and my daughter started crying. Two of them dug their teeth into my breasts. While attending a secondary school in Adamawa, I had lived with some Fulani, so I understood a few Fulani words. I started pleading, at least for my daughter. To my shock, at gunpoint, they removed the dress of my little girl. <laughs> One of them carried her on his head as a baby, on his head as my baby struggled, shouting, Daddy, Mommy, what's going on? Help me! <laughs> I could not help myself. We marched for nine hours. I was half naked. My daughter was totally naked. Her tears was like a, blood, a stream of blood on her cheeks. Our phones had been seized. We ended up in an ungoverned region in the thick of the forest. We met a well-organized group. There were some kidnapped victims. I saw two women, two ladies and three men. They were, there were some people with their legs chained to, to trees. They were as if half dead. We were separated. I was separated from my husband. My daughter was taken away. I only heard her screaming intermittently. I did not know what they were doing to her. These men, now about two dozen had a full kitchen. They had a huge camp and a traditional medical team. How can they say they don't know where these people are? How can they say that? But the camps appeared isolated from each other. We had noises afar indicating it might be nuclear settlements of camps. Right in my presence, I saw them pack the remains of a woman. They took her and buried her a few meters away from us. She had tribal marks. I cannot describe the agony of, of six days in captivity in this little piece. I cannot talk about how they asked my husband to choose between being myself being raped or his daughter being raped. My husband broke down in uncontrollable tears. One of them hit him saying, you're a bastard. You they cry, idiot. They now give him an op they gave him an option that he should be raped by one homosexual among them. My husband, a devout Muslim. My husband is a devout Muslim. He told them that homosexual and rape homosexual and rape of any kind was against Islam. They hit him with the butt of AK forty seven. What do you know about Islam? You can imagine, you are being asked to choose between being raped by a homosexual, your daughter just nine years old, or your wife being raped. They gave the fourth option. If you fail to choose one, we will rape your daughter, rape you the man, and rape me, the wife. 
I myself, the sacrificial, I made myself the sacrificial lamb. My husband begged, <laughs> saying, they should name any price. One of them asked him to bend down. Three beastly criminals sat on his back, jumping until he was too weak to <laughs> stand. I was not allowed to put on any additional clothes. Imagine they, they rape you all night and they stop you from putting on any clothes for 24 hours. The rain fell, the rain fell once. I became a relic at the sexual museum for the army to in turn address me and ask questions about my financial standing. New Fulani men joined the camp. They organized military training for the new Fulani men that came teaching them how to shoot and walk through circles of glowing fire they were not released until after six days we were not released until after six days we had to walk the same zigzag journey back to the main road our eyes blindfolded during the negotiation to pay they said the money was not for them alone that they had to settle those who sent them for me i was I see a thriving organized crime supported by powerful political interests. Now, I do not think we were released to freedom after paying a whopping 8 million naira. I do not think we can ever be free. We can never be free from the anguish, the psychological trauma, the nightmares we suffered, the occasional fits of my daughter, her waking up at night behaving strangely, her asking the same question over and over, Mommy! Mommy, why? Why? And I do not have an answer. In my life, I have never passed through a torture chamber like this. I do not think any society should let this happen. I do not know the fate of those we met and about seven other people brought during the six days we were in captivity. What I saw was a nation that has, colla that has collapsed but pretends she is she lives a people on life support crime is not restricted to Fulani people alone we have yoruba criminals but i don't think yoruba criminals are this beastly these elements are savages i can't imagine i can't imagine yoruba thieves going to sokoto or meduguri to kidnap Fulani people and keep them in their own bushes. It gives me mental torture that this is happening and some people are even trying to justify or look for excuses. Well, as a devout Muslim, myself and my family have taken so less in Allah. <laughs> Not the Nigerian police, not the army, not the government. <laughs> we have taken our faith the way it, make, it came, that our, this is supposed to be faith. <laughs> I thank God that we successfully returned to where we live thousands of miles from Nigeria. We thank God that we have made a vow. Never shall me, any of my children or husband in our lifetime visit Nigeria again. <laughs> Our remains, any time we die, will also not be buried in Nigeria. It was a suggestion my daughter made, which we all adopted. I pity the country. I pity her people who continuously walk like the living dead. I pity those who parade themselves as leaders because they know nothing about what is going on and, and, and the abyss the country is sunk already. I pity Yoruba people. Oh, I pity you. I pity my people. For me, the issue is not about President Buhari. Democracy can produce anything, even the worst in the society. What I worry about is the conspiracy of silence by the people themselves. The ignorance, the treachery, and the illusion that one day things will get better through another election. Since I was born in Nigeria, each year had led from bad to worse and on and on. 
I do not have a solution to what is going on, but I think very soon hell will let loose upon the earth as long as there is no law and order and anarchy and the rule of brutes in the order of the day. Once again, there can never be anything more comforting than my husband who saw what I went through but was able to exchange me, to encourage me and even encourage me to write this little piece after months of agony and sociological imbalance. Good night, Nigerians. <clears throat> so if you see some of us talking, I know that uh, they have destroyed the psyche of many, many Nigerians, obviously, yeah? They have destroyed your feelings. They have destroyed your human feelings to the point that uh, some of you don't feel anything anymore. You laugh at everything, as serious as it is, you laugh at it or you, you, you laugh at I mean, you laugh at scorn and scorn at uh, things because you don't have feelings. When you read the news that uh, 60 people killed, you just read it and you flip the newspaper or you flip the phone and move on because your country has managed to destroy you psychologically. You have no feeling. Therefore, the, uh, what do you call it? The, the loudness of your silence is deafening. And we wait for the day when the anarchy will loom. It's almost there. Very, very close. Anarchy. Where many, many of you will have to resort into self-defense. Defending yourself is what will lead to that anarchy. Because some of you are not really used to that. You are used to just looking away as long as your family is not affected or you are not affected. But you are going to be affected. The anarchy is coming. The civil war is coming. Yes, it will consume thousands. And that is where the sanity will come in. Because your silence for so long is about to consume you. It is already consuming people. I'm sorry if you don't understand Yoruba. This also happened in Yoruba. Many, land. many bad don't tell you. I won't look back on what you say. You are laughing, Shelly. I won't come on your Baba Soro. I won't come on. 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 I won't come Etienne <laughs> Yobani <laughs> Didn't So sorry if you didn't understand Yoruba. So they were talking about, uh, that man was talking Gumi. about the atrocities of Sheikh Fulani Gumi, terrorist. a terrorist, who happened to be a terrorist uh, sympathizer, at the same time the spiritual leader for all the terrorists uh, in northern Nigeria. Those of them who are crossing down to the southern Nigeria. Gumi has a uh, blanket immunity to speak on behalf of a terrorist. And in fact, to advise the government on behalf of the terrorist. And he has finally come so bold to even tell us 
that uh, there is no difference between the Fulani terrorists who are killing and kidnapping people, ransacking villages and destroying lives. He said they are not different from the uh, militants, the Niger Delta militants of old that got amnesty from the government of Yaradua. In fact, Gumi is asking the government of Nigeria to pay these terrorists, pay them, even though we have no idea what they are fighting for. But this is the mentality. So welcome to Mayogun this morning. Before I continue, I'm going to keep you a little bit uh, busy with this uh, video from Sunday. Boo. I just want to play that before I continue. Getting down into this fully. Watch this. <laughs> One more For example, I man we, man we, the general, I want to be the major general. I'll come back to that. So, the news first came out that uh, we have uh, repentant terrorists in Nigeria. Repentant terrorists, terrorists are repentant. They repented and then uh, they are still killing, destroying lives, destroying uh, people's lives, destroying businesses, kidnapping people. They are still doing it. So they came up with this and I was like, this doesn't make any sense. How can you be giving amnesty to terrorists who are still killing your soldiers, kidnapping your soldiers? This doesn't make any sense. I didn't know. Many, many of us, you know, that uh, you see all those, they are shake in northern Nigeria. They are the spiritual leaders for all the terrorists in northern Nigeria. Most of all these terror groups that you see terrorizing every part of Nigeria right now, especially northern Nigeria, their spiritual leaders are the likes of Gumi. Who pray for them? Who tell you that they understand them? You know what they say? They say, we understand them. They are just upset. That is why they can walk in and kill uh, 100 people, behead 100 people, kill 200 people, kill 500 people. Nobody will be arrested. Rather, you will see a repentant terrorist granting interview, talking about his life as a terrorist in Nigeria. But we didn't know, right? We didn't know that uh, their, their Islamic cleric, their Islamic uh, chiefs, they are all terrorists in northern Nigeria because they are terrorist sympathizers too. We didn't know that they always go behind to negotiate for all this ransom paid to these terrorists. We didn't know that they were actually involved in pardoning all these terrorists by the Nigerian army called the Operation Safe Corridor. We didn't know until Gumi came out. We didn't know that Gumi is so powerful with the terrorists that he sat there for 10 years that they have been killing their people. They are still killing them. Only for him to come out now and say they deserve to be rehabilitated. When the Niger Deltans were agitating for, uh, they call it resource control, controlling their own oil. Their governors, their local chiefs, they were all involved in militancy, kidnapping, negotiation, and all of that. It was a big business in Niger Delta then. So then uh, Yaradua came and he said, you know what? If you guys are going to stop bombing the pipeline, kidnapping expatriates, and all of that, yeah, we'll give you amnesty, we'll give you money. That ruined the business for the governors, the uh, political class in Niger Delta for that time. Because ransom money, was so good that time that if you if the Niger Delta kidnap Oyibo, they will show them in the video, right? They will say, oh, we have collected $10 million, $5 million. They were collecting real money. But they were not killing civilians. They were not going into the villages or going into towns, killing people, kidnapping people, or raping women, or raping children. They were not doing that. The reason why Nigeria gave them amnesty was because they were crippling the oil production of Nigeria then. Nigeria was losing a lot of money. So you, it was much like uh, economically sensible for Yaradua then to go and give them amnesty so that they can continue to pump oil 
from Niger Delta. So business ruined. Today, the people in the business of uh, uh, what do you call it, the business of crime are the clerics, the political class in northern Nigeria. They benefit from it. They came to power through it, and now they are killing their own people, making money from their own people problem. And now they are actually now compensating terrorists who kill their people, raping their women, bragging about it. Gumi, who is leading the charge, is the spiritual leader of the terrorists in northern Nigeria. So Gumi went. You remember this, uh, you know, this Ka Kagara boy is kidnapped. That the uh, Nigerian government is uh, paying $800 million, uh, 800 million era for their freedom. You see that money, that money doesn't go to all the terrorists alone. It goes to the likes of Gumi. It goes to so many other of their spiritual leaders in northern Nigeria. And they are going to be emboldened more. Gumi came out. In that Nigeria, Gumi knows the whereabouts of where they kept the Kagara boys. We don't even know the numbers of school children they kidnapped now, right? Now, people are now saying, even Chibo girls seems like it's a staged, it's a staged kidnap, I mean, kidnapping. The same thing in Yobi, the Afchi girls, it was a staged kidnapping. Uh, Kankara boys, it was a staged kidnapping. Because the moment the terrorists move these children out of the vicinity, no soldier, no police, no nothing will stop them until they get to where they are taking the children to. Now, when they get to where they are taking the children to, their governors, their senators, their cleric spiritual leaders, their Islamic jihadist leaders in northern Nigeria, they will quickly start working about Miyet Yala and Co., trying to reach out to who is going to pay. Since they are the one in government, how much is 800 million? Eh? 800 million, 800 million, 800 million, 800 million. Asu was on strike for a whole year. Buhari couldn't give them 800 million to offset the salaries of the uh, you know striking uh, school teacher, I mean sorry university lecturers but they paid 800 million naira to terrorists the same way they are paying art currencies to terrorists but what we didn't know was that they are traditional rulers they are religious leaders they are all terrorists terrorist uh, enablers so gumi came out and he said i have met with these guys and uh, they are going to release the boys we are talking to them but you know one thing is this. I think uh, we should begin to give them amnesty too, like Niger Delta militants. But there's something he said that really caught my attention that I think you should pay attention to as well. We finally found somebody who interpreted what he said. Gumi was meeting with the terrorist. And at that meeting where they were all together, Gumi was telling the terrorist that when the terrorist said, the reason why we are fighting Nigeria is because they are killing us. They are killing our people. Uh, they are arresting us. They are doing this and that. Do you know what Gumi told them? Gumi said, uh, uh, you should, uh, I understand your problem, but you shouldn't uh, be killing uh, civilians, women. You see those people who are killing you. They are not uh, Muslim soldiers. So. They are Christian soldiers. So. That's why they are shooting and killing you. So if you want to fight them, those are the people you should go and kill. Christian soldiers. Christian soldiers, Southern soldiers. That's why I said in this video, I'm going to play it for you. Gumi, he said it in uh, maybe it's Fufudeo, maybe it's Awusa, whatever fucking language he's speaking. He was telling terrorists that they were misunderstanding those who are, you know, Nigeria is telling you that they are going after terrorists, Abi. Or they have arrested some of them, which is a lie. However, when they kill some of them, right, the terrorists are now saying, that Nigeria is killing them. Nigerian soldiers are killing them. Do you know what Gumit said? He said, no, 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 no. Do, they are not Nigerian soldiers. They are, you see, there are Muslims. In Niger Nigerian soldiers who are Muslims, they will never kill you. They understand what you are fighting for. They will never shoot you, okay? You see those ones that are shooting you, those ones that are, those ones that are arresting you, they are, they are Christian soldiers. They are dangerous. They are the evil people that, uh, you know, you can do whatever you like to them. I'm not making this up. If you understand that, Usa, maybe you should interpret this for me. Soldier, Amma, I will not be so concerned. Ya, for the sooner I am so doing the security way and now, but Muslim I will not. Once I'm soldier, I will not Muslim. I will not be Muslim. Once I'm not Muslim, I will not be Muslim. 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 I will not be Wurin Rama kuma sai aka ga kun kashe Nanyiji, kun kashe Yaro, 
kun kashe tsoho shine kuma hankali mutane tashi ya za a yi soja su zo shi ƙarna masu aiki shi ƙarna amma in an tashi kuma sai a rama a cikin mutanen gari barin ba ku misali shi karin jiya an kama an yi garkuwa da mutane cikin su mace mai hijabin ta da yawo yanzu aka suna tsare ko ba ku ji labarin ba da irin wannan shike bata sunan haƙƙin ku an bi an kama yara a makaranta suna ka titi gada aka yi tami why said he was telling them that those who are killing you are not uh, muslimi there is no muslim soldiers that will shoot at you guys you are fighting a jihad we understand what you are fighting for you see those ones that are shooting you arresting you they are christians go after them kill them they are the enemy we see if you see a nigerian army nigerian soldier who is a muslim we never touch you Please don't, don't, you know, these children you are kidnapping and all of that. They don't know anything. You are just punishing them because of what uh, Christian soldiers, Niger Christian Nigerian soldiers did to you. I'm going to go talk to government on your behalf, guys, okay? Let me go and talk to government on your behalf. When, they, so, when, uh, when the journalist stopped uh, Gumi and asked him, Gumi, how far with your meeting? How, how about your meeting with these uh, terrorists? You have been able to locate them, but Nigerian army couldn't locate them. Nigerian police couldn't locate them. Niger Even when they kidnap people, they, don't, they can't locate them. But you, Mr. Gumi, the spiritual leader of terrorists in Nigeria, what do you have to tell us after me? Allah will not bless the terrorist. Allah will not bless you, Gumi. You are a terrorist. And let me tell you something. For those who are terrorist enablers, it's just a matter of time before you'll be exposed. Right? You will be exposed. You will be killed. Same way they kill terrorists. As terrorists uh, are vile criminals. Who doesn't deserve any, any amnesty whatsoever with what they have done and what they will continue to do in Nigeria? So Allah, eh, Allah will kill you, Gumi, and every other the people who believe in your charade, in this jihadi war that you northern criminals, northern religious leaders, you've unleashed it on yourselves, on your people. Now you are crossing over, you're crossing the border down south, telling us that uh, it is either we accept this or we die. Now, here is the deal. You will die. Keep coming. Buhari won't save you. I mean it. Buhari won't save you. If Buhari like, let him give you more amnesty for whatever it is. Don't come down south. Okay? Don't come down south. And this is where the worry is. It is what will lead to Nigeria's civil war. If Nigeria survived the civil war this year, it won't survive it next year. And for the likes of Gumi, they will have to return to their Niger Republic or match themselves to their people in the Republic, or Chad, and all those places. Yorubas will fight. We will defend ourselves. I'm not talking to the Yoruba slaves, okay? I'm not talking to the Yoruba, uh, what do you call it, all these uh, Ombu slaves. I'm talking about the, I'm talking to the Yorubas or Moluabis, Yoruba or Moluabis. The born and bred Yoruba, uh, you know, uh, sons and daughters, they will fight. They will push back. Your terrorist brother will not get amnesty in Yoruba land. Your Buhari can give them amnesty, return them to your northern uh, forest. But in Yoruba land, they will be killed en masse as they are already committing the same crime in Yoruba land. Here is the deal. Their governor in Zamfara State, a PDP governor, uh, Matawale, the one that has already submitted uh, a budget, where well, he's already got an approval for a budget of uh, 300 million naira for them to help uh, bandits in Zamfara State. That is the story they are prepared, pushing to the rest of the, the country, especially in Yoruba land, right? They are telling us that uh, kidnappers, rapists, arsonists, criminals who kill people, they are not all criminals. That's why he said, listen to the criminal. It's not all planning pl pl are criminals. Some uh, 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 good citizens, but due to some circumstances, they subscribe to such a criminality. Olori Brukwenyo is an Olori Brukwenyo. If you're a Yoruba man, you know what an Olori Brukwenyo means. Unfortunate human being. He is the governor of a state in northern Nigeria. They are kidnapping. Half of Zamfara state is now in the control and command of terrorists in Zamfara. These farmers in Zamfara, they pay tax and different taxes to terrorists in Zamfara to stay alive. That is the criminal who is paying uh, ransom 
paying, uh, you know, security allowances to terrorists in Zamfara. And that's the man telling you that uh, every one of them who kidnap human beings, kidnap uh, your fellow human being, rape them, torture them, and even kill them. And you said you are not all criminals. No, you are. You are all criminals. In our book, you are all unrepented, uh, you know, criminals. And you will be dealt with in our own way. Look at what they did in uh, Ojal. <laughs> Federal government, I want uh, one sponsor on uh, Boko Arams. I uh, want uh, one sponsor on uh, Fulani S men. If not, Kilo de Tibu Ariko Dide, Lati stop Fulani S men. On uh, Meati Ella, on uh, Tunen, uh, Lati so we pay on uh, Mark Besson, Bobo Fulani Takpa, Tim Wokpa, Ipon uh, Mark Besson, Bobo Fulani, Tim Wokpa, Ati, on uh, Malu, on uh, Tim Woku, <laughs> Lori Le Babawa. Mm. Ti ko ba nse pe federal government lo sponsor won ni so ye ki mi ati alaso be ki government de si ma wo won ni ran sugbon eh atijo tese bo do bayi o awon idi ti a fin so wi pe ko si abo fun awa omo yoruba ni ile nigeria lele yo se tiri awon idi ta fin ni ko si abo fun omo yoruba ni ile nigeria because ijoba nigeria Fula ni ni kon lo fevo. Fula ni ni kon ni joba nengira lo fevo. Ko fevo elo mi. Ko fevo iran mi. Ju fula ni lo. Bok bo wong mo ale. To wajak pe fula ni lo ba ya wong son. Ton kik be wong nengira. Wong nengira wong la. Wong nengira wong la kpa wong la ikbe. Ashe. Ashe edu mare. Wong nengira yelo makpa bu bo yida no la ikbe. Those of you shouting that one Nigeria, one Nigeria. And I like I like what that guy said. I want more lead. If you to buy your son, one part yeah, one part buy. Oh Lord, you're cool. TP. Oh, you're cool. I'm cool. Oh, Jenny. Oh, more lead. Yeah. That is why you will sit down and watch the carnage going on in Yoruba land. And all you could say is uh, one Nigeria. Don't let us start uh, this. Don't let us start that. In Ondo State, where Fulani terrorists uh, wrecked havoc, and the people responded. Right? Do you know that uh, today? Their police IG already sent them letter that all this, all those people who killed cows in Ondo, they should report to Abuja tomorrow, Monday. Yoruba land. And you will see some of them, the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, Omo Ali's in Yoruba land. These are the people they want to give uh, amnesty to. Watch them. These are the guys to get. Allah. <laughs> The terrorist that Gumi is asking us. Somebody said, Oh, no, that's not what Gumi said. I've read the comments now. I just read the comments and he said, Oh, that's not what Gumi said. My is only telling them that kidnapping school children, kidnapping uh, uh, women is ruining their work. You are a madman. I've had people who are actually like, you know, repeating that same line too. And what happened eh, to the soldiers that were killing them that he, he talked about? That doesn't 
you don't get the meaning of that from your from your own warped mind, do you? Probably not. Look at that. Mazi Namdikanu said, by the time he's done with Nigeria, Somalia will be better than Nigeria. Some of you thought it was something that is impossible. Is Nigeria not getting to Somalia now? Is, is, is Somalia not getting better than Nigeria now? You now see all these Janja weed criminals, terrorists with different guns, like war guns, roaming your forest, making videos, meeting your clerics, make, meeting your government officials, negotiating for your peace, for your freedom, right there in your country. And you are there, living like, uh, well, hey, bandito, hey, bandito. Meanwhile, you haven't even started. Somalia. Will be better than Nigeria with what these criminals want to do. If you have a chance of uh, give, getting a proper update of what has happened or what uh, yeah what has happened in northern Nigeria, you realize that Somalia is better than half of the northern Nigeria right now because those of them you see there are now living under the control command of the military. I mean of the of of, of this uh, terrorist. Even uh, uh, Rufaya Kaduna Littlefinger says. Or more, we don't get enough soldiers. So Nigeria that doesn't have enough soldiers to protect their own people. They have enough soldiers to send to the east to go and look for the ESN in the east. Listen to Air Rufaya. Yes. Uh, we don't have enough military men. I think we should concentrate our air power and our firepower on the ground on wiping out the bandits that are mostly in forests. We don't uh, wait for them uh, to come and kidnap our children. How many soldiers are you going to put in a school? to prevent uh, 200 bandits coming at one time to, to attack a school. How many? How many soldiers do we have? How many will be doing uh, military duties in the in, in northeast, northwest, and so on? And how many can you stare in Kaduna State where we have uh, 300 schools? It, it, it's not, it's not uh, practical. They are, and, and this is what is uh, tragic about this whole situation. Some people think this insecurity is... is, 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 is uh, is an opportunity to gain some political capital and make ridiculous suggestions that are just uh, shallow. I don't agree with that. There is a problem. There are criminals. They are mostly in forests. Let us uh, map them. Let us uh, uh, plan and carry out simultaneous operations to decimate them. And then the few that remain that want to surrender, you can then sit and see what you can do to, you know, accept their surrender and rehabilitate them. That's how every war is fought. You don't start a war by saying, okay, I'm forgiving you, you know, let's... <laughs> I decided to play that simply because of what he said. They know where they are. They know where the terrorists are. They mingle with them. They meet them. They talk to them. They know them. They make money from it. Some of them are even getting political appointments because of their involvement in this terrorism. All at the expense of uh, the mumus, the collateral mumus, the one Nigerians, the obedient fools, the sophisticated morons, your co you collateral mumus. They know where the terrorists are. They are saying, Let's plan. Let us plan. They are killing your people. And they are still thinking, let us plan on how to go after them. Listen to this. Steed them talk, say, make me off my But then go say, my ego don't come. My people make you lie down oh, yo, yo. My people don't come oh, yo, yo. My people make we shut up oh, yo, yo. My people don't come oh, yo, yo.